I was captivated by the story of the two astronauts in particular that were meant to travel to the International Space Station for eight days, uh, but were stuck there for almost 10 months. And initially I was like, oh my God, I mean, I couldn't imagine being in an isolated space for 10 months when I wasn't psychologically prepared for it. And what are the consequences of that? But then it led me thinking, well, maybe this is an opportunity to think, can we really go and colonize Mars? And from a doctor's point of view, what are the consequences of being in zero G for a long period of time? And what do you do to mitigate that? And, and how do you fix it when they get home? And once I watched the, the dragon uh, land and the extraction process, you started to look at the people coming out and you're like, a bit disfigured. Their face was bigger. Uh, they were all transported uh, in sort of a modified wheelchair. They didn't just get up out and walk on their own. And uh, the smiles appeared a bit forced to me. Like, mm, you know, I'm good to be back, but I'm not really feeling all that well. And so I started to delve into the topic of, well, what happens uh, when you're in space? And there's a variety of things that happen to the body because as creatures of Earth, we evolved with gravity. So from the first period of evolution until now, we always had gravity as part of uh, our uh, environment, if you will. So one of the interesting things is the degree of muscle loss where uh, they're not using their legs or the muscles of their back to move around because they're essentially floating. The consequence of that is there's an enormous loss of skeletal muscle in the legs uh, and in the back. So when it comes time to walk in coming home, they've got very, very weak legs. If you can imagine uh, having a leg injury and having a cast, you'll remember that your leg gets very, very weak afterwards and it takes time to build that up. Adding to that is the loss of bone density, where a astronaut will lose about 1% of their bone density per month in space. So now you've got weak muscles in your legs and weak bones. And that really presents a challenge when it comes time to rehabilitate. Uh, because too much exercise, you're going to break your bone because you've got very, very weak, brittle bones. Uh, but at the same time, you need to build up that lever of strength in order to start walking again. Now, from my point of view, one of the more interesting things are the cardiovascular issues. Now, being weightless, there is little means of allowing blood to get back to the heart because the blood just wants to spread out. There's no gravity-driven filling of the heart. So the heart actually gets weaker uh, over the course of time. How weak uh, remains to be seen by uh, their testing afterwards, but there is a known decrease in the function or the squeeze of the heart with each month that you're in, in space. And, and that will manifest as uh, decreased energy and also the ability, the inability to stand from a seated position called orthostatic hypotension uh, because there are fluid shifts in the body that the heart's not ready for to come back from zero gravity to normal gravity. One of the reasons that uh, I noticed that their face was swollen is that because there is no gravity driven drainage uh, of fluid, uh, there is a tendency for that fluid to accumulate in the face and particularly the eyes. Uh, there's a syndrome called SANS, which is space associated neuroocular syndrome, uh, and that can impact uh, the optic nerve and cause swelling around it and decrease vision. It usually goes away and they don't end up blind, but it is a challenge and they've got very, very foggy vision uh, for a period of time. The most important thing that, that is not really addressed fully and, and will have to be addressed if we're actually going to go to Mars is that period of confinement, uh, which to me would drive me crazy. But to be in a, a tiny little confined space when you think you're going for a long week, a, a long week and you end up there for, for 10 months, I mean, it takes some psychological preparation to be in a, uh, a large studio apartment for, for 10 months without getting, uh, getting out much. Also, the radiation risk has been well described in the past. Uh, that will remain to be seen, whether that 10 months was a long period of time and they have an increased risk of cancer because they don't have our atmosphere to protect them from the, uh, the harmful uh, sun and radiation. Uh, the immune system may get weakened and uh, sleep will be screwed up for uh, a fairly long period of time because there's no circadian rhythm. That's something that we evolved from by having sunlight and darkness. 
uh, and you'll see creatures that don't own watches and, and don't depend upon alarms, uh, they tend to get up and go to sleep at the same time because of an internal clock. That internal clock's been wrecked uh, by being in space. So those are all the consequences. And the, the next thing is, well, are they dose dependent, meaning do they accumulate month by month? And some do. And there needs to be some sort of means of slowing our metabolism down, slowing our mind down in order to allow for a prolonged period to get to another destination. Now, in deference to coming back to Earth, we're now talking about going to another planet that still doesn't have normal gravity and, and normal oxygen and normal sunlight. So that consequence may just compound over the course of time. And for now, I'd be looking at it if I were going to Mars, that it is a one-way trip because the likelihood of getting there, uh, getting healthy again and coming back, I think in the short term uh, is probably zero. But having said that, uh, there are some means for these folks that have been there for 10 months to get better. First and foremost, there's gonna be a tremendous amount of, of study on them. Uh, most importantly, they're going to have a really uh, close look at their heart with an echocardiogram, perhaps an angiogram to see if uh, there's any calcification of their arteries and just how bad their uh, their function is. They'll be put in something called the DEXA scan, which is a measures your bone density to see where they are. But importantly, what nutrition is going to be required to build that back. Uh, also, in body scans, which uh, you can get actually on Amazon. It's a scale that you hold on to, and it will measure the amount of muscle uh, in each of your uh, each of your limbs, your your central uh, core of your body, and uh, chest and shoulders. Now. That's important because it's going to guide your physical rehab. It's going to determine which way you're going to prioritize so that you can build muscle strength back in a safe manner without that imbalance that will exist. So I, I would suspect that most of the exercises are initially are going to be sitting down uh, and then walking with the help of parallel bars uh, or guided uh, walking until that strength and that balance comes back. It's going to be very, very gradual. Uh, to readapt and then there'll be a lot of information gathered and proposed for nutrition what will be a massive protein uh, spend because of all that protein that's been lost by being in space you just can't replete uh, protein with that dry food that, that exists in the space station so there'll be a huge component of, of protein ingestion and, and a variety of vitamins and then I imagine quite a bit of guided therapy depending upon what their blood work shows. The things that uh, they'll have to avoid initially, they're not going to be able to do any high intensity exercise for quite a while because of the risk of joint injury and bone injury. Uh, there'll be uh, rapid changes, they'll have to avoid rapid changes in environment like altitude because their oxygen saturation will have changed based upon having zero gravity and always forced air rather than the air that's in the environment. They may feel short of breath because remember they were getting a fair bit of oxygen pumped in and it was always extrinsic. So now if they went to a higher altitude, for instance, they, they might uh, feel the effects of that quite readily. And then psychological stress to be in the company of just a handful of people communicating only by phone or by screen for 10 months, uh, it will be very difficult to interact uh, with people. And there'll be a fair bit of depression because I imagine that even being stuck in that small area the sights and sounds and experience of what that is must be incredibly exhilarating and after the gratitude of being home on earth with loved ones is over again they might realize well that was my last trip into that surreal environment and that will take a little time it's like a rock star doing their last tour uh, where they finish up and say well what do i do now uh, i experience this they'll go on the talking circuit for a period of time and then say well now what am I going to do? Um, and so I think that it was a incredible experience for me to watch because it got me thinking about Elon Musk's desire to create an interplanetary species and how is that going to be possible? Is that going to be possible uh, with creating a robust society or is it just going to be a, uh, a walk down the hill into uh, infirmity and death uh, on arrival to another planet. And I think that remains to be seen. So if this was helpful to you, please subscribe uh, to this channel and uh, leave comments that uh, I can interact directly with you.